the biblical truth of our hymns. Today we do a wonderful hymn. When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross by Isaac Watts. And I have four stanzas in the hymnal that I hold here. And let me, there's a, it says the original fourth stanza of this hymn, it's omitted, but it has a powerful. And mine has four, but it doesn't have this one. His dying crimson, like a robe, spreads o'er his body on the tree. Then I am dead to all the globe, and all the globe is dead to me. Christian, are you dead to the world? And does the world consider you dead because of Jesus Christ? Are you an outcast? I mean, come on, let, let's put the fact to be. There are some people out there that believe everybody loves Jesus. And I say to that fool is you never had a public ministry. Not everybody loves Jesus. And the Bible says, marvel not if the world hates you. Know that it hated me first, Jesus is speaking. And that with God in the world is enmity by God to the world. This hymn we're going to look at today, I would most likely would, no, not most likely, I would, wrong words, I would put it into a hymnal book if I were to build a hymnal book. It attacks pride. It puts pride of man against the man Christ Jesus. It puts pride as a sin that we need to repent of. And it puts Jesus Christ as the sinless one that needs not to be ever to be repented. Survey. When I survey, that is to view. Take a view, to, to look, to examine. When you go down the road and you see surveyors ahead and you see that men with a little camera outfit and all that they're, they're measuring they're scoping and it takes a degree of learning to do that job and when we set back as an amateur oil painter that I am and I'm up close and I'm painting and there are times I got to step back and look at my painting to see is this wrong is that right do I need a little more work here or did I put too much work there? You got to step back. And when I step back from the cross, my salvation through Jesus Christ that died upon that cross. Now the cross is not an idol to me. It's the place of judgment of Jesus Christ, God. And when I surveyed the wondrous cross, there were three of them that day. Upon three crosses, there was one in the middle that died for me. There was one that rejected Jesus, rejected God. And that thief died and went into hell. There is a thief on the cross, we don't know right or left, that repented to Jesus Christ and went off to paradise to see Jesus Christ. When I survey the wondrous cross under which the Prince of Glory died. That's the first of three parts of the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. It wasn't just a man on that middle cross. It wasn't just Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, that died on that cross. Though he was. It was God manifested in the flesh. Upon that cross was God, and upon that cross was the man Christ Jesus. And the blood that spilled out, according to Acts 20, 28, was the blood of God himself, without sin. So, upon the humbleness of Christ dying on that cross, and the pride of my riches gain, I count but loss. 
If I were to gain the whole world and lose my soul, I would be a failure. If I go through the whole world and do all my accomplishments and never have Jesus Christ as my Savior, I'd be a fool. If I were gain all the money, all the silver, all the gold, all the diamonds, all the gemstones, that cannot match, that cannot be the Savior dying on the cross. Are you going to give God gold? Are you going to give him U.S. currency, euro, Japanese yen or China yen? Are you going to give him what denomination of money could you pay God with all the denominations of money out there? And yet when we come to the source of money, whether it be gold, whether it be silver, whether it be paper, whether it be wood, whether it be stones, whether it be seashells, whatever the currency is of the place in the world. We forget one thing, that all the raw materials of this world comes from God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And in that earth, God made all the, the raw materials, the raw ores. So I'm going to come to God with all the gold, and he made the gold, and he owns the gold. He just allowed me to borrow it. And poor content on uh, all my pride. God never, ever in recorded scripture ever had pride. God in heaven is not ever going to say to Jesus openly or privately, I am proud of you, my son. Now, I've said it to my son and I've said it to my daughter. But there is no pride in God. It's a sin. And get proud of our churches, get proud of our work, get proud of our family. There is no pride. Pride is a sin that needs to be confessed. God says, well done. God says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's what God says. And I met many a person out of Pope and I met many of a Christian. That, pride. America, we're number one. That's a sin. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast. That's pride. Look at me. Look at me. Look how great I look at our church. Look at our numbers. Look how great. Look at what, look at what I do. Look at the papers on the wall I got. But look at the grades. Look at the grades. Look how wonderful I was. That's pride. It's a sin. Isaac Watts is putting down the pride and boasting of what we do. I do it. I'm sorry to say I do it. My thoughts do it. And there's one thing my my being hates of this flesh is to be cut or stepped on. And I don't mean physically. I mean you can just make me mad. I'm, how dare you make me mad? How dare you offend me? And we've let the spirit of offense and offending today take conquer, take rule, take power. How dare you offend us? And you got to... Take that pride of offense, offending, being offended, and you got to put it under the blood of Christ. You got to fight it with the spiritual armor that God's given us. We ought not to boast. Listen, one day the Lord tarries, if not today, there are graves where there is just bones and nothing else. And maybe the, the body is older than the old and there's not even bones left. I'm going to boast how great I am. And yet if I were to get a little tiny bug in my body, oh, I'm going to lay in bed with a headache and chills and uh, uh, fever and oh, take care of me. Oh, I don't feel so good. You can have the greatest man on a football field running and catching the ball and making 
making the touchdowns and all that, and then he get a little muscle cramp or do a little injury to his leg. And he's out for the count for life. And boasting on his on his player card, boasting on his stats, boasting by the by the people that announced the game, and boasting in the magazines, and boasting in the book, and one little thing could take you down. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast. And when we do boast, because we do boast, we ought to confess it as a sin. Save in the death of Christ, my God. What? What can we boast about? How about Jesus Christ? How about lifting up what Jesus Christ has done for me? How about going out and telling someone about Jesus Christ? I can't do that. Well, get gospel tracts. Let gospel tracts do it for you. Or sit them down if they got time. Just tell them how you got saved. How about I'm a Christian? I'll tell you what a Christian really is. It's someone who has believed on the saving grace, nothing else but the blood of Jesus Christ. You may have Christ stood dangling on your cross between your breasts or, or on your rearview mirror on the wall of your house, but he's not on that cross no more. Let me tell you how. Let me tell you that the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ had no eggs, had no bunny. But had an angel proclaim, he's not here. He is risen. How about my all in all, my life to be, and the, and the security and the peace and the wonder that I have lies upon Jesus Christ. Not a man, not a pill, not a bottle. All the vain things that charm me most. Things that make me happy. And Peter says they're all going to burn up. The career, the car, the house. Your garden, whatever you cherish in this world, it's going to burn up. Save the whales, they're still going to die. Save the planet, it's going to burn up. Save your soul through the blood of Jesus Christ. I sacrifice them to his blood. Everything that I put ahead of God is a sin, has become an idol, has become an image, has become a small G-O-D-S in my life. And Isaac says, repent of that sin and put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. We say, what can that be? Anything that grabs the thoughts, anything that grabs the attention, but God. Put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a sin. Can't read my Bible because I got a movie. The movie is a sin. I can't read my Bible because I got this magazine. The magazine's a sin. I can't pray because of this. It's a sin. Oh, I can't go to church when my family's coming over for family weekend. That's a sin. It's a sin. See from his head. Oh, the thorns that, that were mashed and bashed upon his head. The thorns that I am told are sharp and long and all oh, the pain upon his royal head. And yet he's coming back in Revelation 19 with many crowns. And I've talked to people, I said, listen, if he's got, and we're going to look at the moment, but he, if he's got in his hands the marks of those nails and he's got the, 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 the marks of the nails in his feet and he's got the wound in his side from the spear, does he not have the wound in the head of those thorns that were placed upon him? Does he not have the scars of his back where the, the cat of nine tails whipped him apart? I don't know about that, but there's possible. Upon his holy head, they said, we'll give you a crown. We'll give you a crown of thorns that you cursed Adam with. Adam was cursed with thorns and thistles will grow from the ground. Here you are, king. Here you are, King Jesus. We'll put the crown of thorns of curse upon your head. The holy head of God. And the blood would be dripping down in his face and into his eyes and on his cheeks and in his beard. And that Acts 20, 28 says that blood was holy, was holy blood. That blood was the blood of Jesus Christ. It says it's the blood of God. It is pure blood. It had no sin at all. The thorns. The cat of nine tails. The fists. The ripping of his beard from his face. 
There's no beauty that we desire him. The Bible says he was beaten beyond recognition. His hands. Oh, he laid those hands out. He said, here it is, take it. You know, those hands did not hold. I would not believe it held. And maybe handcuffs. I mean, I don't mean a handcuff there. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they tied his hands, but he didn't call for a lawyer. He didn't fight. He didn't call down the legion of angels. I can just imagine those hands if he just walked up the pilot and said, oh, you know, I'm here. And when he came down to put him on that cross, and I think he probably just laid down and said, okay, here's the right, here's the left. How about you? Fox's Book of Martyrs speaks about many Christians through the Spirit of God laid their lives down for the Word, for the Lord Jesus Christ. He manifested in the flesh without, I find no fault in him. Did not struggle, did not fight. His feet. His feet. You know, you know the book of Romans says in chapter 10, it says, How beautiful are the feet of them that, that preach the gospel of peace. I believe that is also backed up, I think it's Isaiah. I could be wrong about that. How beautiful are the feet of Jesus Christ, God. At the feet the disciples fell at. At the feet where Mary was kissing. At the feet that we're going to see Jesus. Sorrow and love flowed mingled down what mingled down the blood what love for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish the love There's no greater love because for god is love every man that comes to, comes to the cross is not saved does not know what love is because they don't know god you can only know God when you come to the cross of Jesus and come out of the empty tomb as a believer, as in all your faith and all your all is rested on the merit of Jesus Christ alone, minus nothing you can do. And when you are given the Holy Spirit inside to dwell inside you and you become a child of God through Jesus Christ and his finished work of the gospel that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, then you are saved. Then you can know what love is because you are of God. No unsaved individual today, yesterday, or to be in the future, the Lord tarries, knows what love is until they know God. And as a Christian, what is love is when you look at that cross. Do you see, for God so loved the world, it's not a rock and roll love. It's not what I can get from you. It's not, okay, we're done, we're finished, you know, our times to come. That love of God is a charity love that he gave. For God so loved the world, he gave. That's the definition of charity. Love giving. And what could he get back from us, miserable piles of dirt? Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compress so rich a crown? What is better than Jesus Christ? Tell me. Tell me what religion, tell me what education, tell me what science will give you eternal life, a greater hope, the blessed hope, love, joy, and peace. Tell me, please. Catholics, they have killed Bible-believing Christians. They have tortured Bible-believing Christians. Uh, Congregationalists up north, they, they confiscated their, their, their lands. They took the, the people who believe Jesus in the Bible. They whipped them. They beat them. They put them in jail. They put them to all kinds of harassment. They put them to banishment. Tell me. Tell me how good your alcohol is. 
and then go knock on the doors of that brewery or wherever they, the distillery where they make that alcohol that is your favorite, that is your drug, that is your God. Go knock on those doors when you are broken, you have no money. Say, please give me something. I need your, I need your drink that I've been drinking all these years. I can't suffer without your drink. Give me, please. They won't even open the door to you. And then watch Jesus Christ and God the Father. God, in Jesus Christ, I am your child. I need your help. Open up. And the Bible says he doesn't need to open. The Bible says I'm already seated in heavenly places. I don't need a door open. I went through the door of salvation at the cross. At the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light. Never a closed door for me. It's never God rejecting me. Never God saying, get out of here. I'll, I'll never leave thee for safety. God will never tell me, get lost. Because I got saved. Go to your doctor. Your doctor may, if you have no more money, you have no more funds, you have no more resources, get out of here. Get away from me. Come back with insurance. Come back with money. Today, doctors, the first thing they do, uh, some of the doctors, I shouldn't say all, but some of the doctors, the first thing they do when you check in, copay. Copay. That's your God? I walk up to the cross, I walk up to Jesus, I walk up to the throne of God through Jesus Christ, and God says, how you doing? I'm not doing so well, Lord. I've, I've got troubles and problems. And Lord God, Father, if you look at Jesus, Jesus had problems. He suffered. He had anguish. He, he knows exactly how I feel. Lord Jesus, speak to me, to the Father, and tell him how I ache, how I hurt. You remember, Lord Jesus. I'm not going to heaven. I'm already in heaven. I am seated in heavenly places. If I were to die, I'd be absent from the body, present with the Lord. If the rapture would happen, boom, I'm up. No ifs, no maybes, no burning candles, no no praying priests, no whatever the religion says you you got to do for that person after they die. You don't need to do that. I don't need last rites because I got right at the cross, and it's everlasting. We're in the home realm. Of nature mine that were a pre present far too small. What of the whole world? What of the he's got the whole world? No, I've got the God that made the, the whole world. I've got the God that created the whole world. Right now, the devil's in charge of this world. You could and he offered it to Jesus, Jesus turned it down because Jesus is gonna get it all. Matter of fact, Jesus is gonna get the new earth, new heaven. This is all going to be vaporized and burnt up. Love so amazing. Again, love. So divine of God. Demands my soul, my life, my all. What about the God of Muslim? If you don't convert to us, you're an infidel. Take off their necks. Make them slaves. That's a, that's a wonderful great God. That God wants their people to shed blood. My God shed his blood and wants to save you. He's not willing that any should perish. The love that I have of God through Jesus Christ is God love. It's God's love. It's not only God's love as a possession, but it is God. The Bible says in 1 John, God is love. That is his attitude. And the love of Jesus Christ for me, believing on him, is God love. It's holy and righteous and not sensible and fleshy. Why do I go out witness? Why do I pass out trash? Why do I try to get the gospel out? It is the mere thing that I can do for what Christ has done for me. We just passed their Easter season and there are places in, in, in the world, countries where people were night and tied themselves, nailed themselves to crosses. There are people that went up and down stairs and mountains upon glass to bleeding themselves, to make themselves be tortured for, for their God. My God doesn't ask me to do that. My God says, you're saved, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Leave your blood inside your body. And believe me, there'll be some people that would want your blood. God's not for torturing yourself. And he'll be angry at those that, that do torture you. 
and get off ourselves and get off with how great we are and bless seeing how great thou art. My thoughts is how great I am. And it's a sin because it should be how great thou art. That hymn is how great thou art. Not how great I am. Not great. how great my church is. How great the pastor is. How great the priest is. How great the car is. How great my job is. is how great the sports team is. How great thou art. I, I say get back to Bethel where you first met Christ. I should also say get back, step back from the cross and just survey what happened that day. The Lord's Supper. Step back and look at that cross. Look at the torture that God took innocently for our souls. It's my fault. It's my sins. My iniquity. My transgression. My trespass. All upon him. Step back and realize. It is because of me of that cross. It is because of me of that pain. It's because of me of that suffering. Look back on that cross, the bleeding cross of Jesus Christ. Yeah, God left the throne. He was born in that little manger, all oh, the cute little baby, and, and the shepherds coming. Oh, how sweet. No wise men. Oh, how wonderful and great. But look at 33 and a half years later on that cross. The pain, the misery, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken? Because of sins of me. Because of my sins. And you as a lost man will dare to think you're going to approach God and say, how good I am. Can you imagine going up to God and maybe I'm being foolish, forgive me if it's a sin. But maybe, how you know, at the great white throne judgment, you how great I am is that sinner standing before God and God's like, all right, strike up the chorus. How great thou art. That'd be interesting. God, look at look at the place where I went to worship. And yet you've never been to Calvary. Look at the look at the religion I was of, God, and you never visited the empty tomb. God, look at the water I was saved in. And yet you've never heard he is risen. You never believe. We are not going to hell and burning and, and, and torments forever because of that cross of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We will never have a full eternity without ever have time with no more pain, no more sorrow, a brand new body, no more sin. Forever. Because of Christ dying on that cross, shedding his blood. And I know the hands and the feet and the side, according to the scriptures, are marred. But what about that head too? And the Bible says, what are those wounds in thy hands and the feet? He says, I was wounded in the house of my friends. It's not how great I am. It's how great thou art. Now, thou is God, Jesus Christ. How dare the Jehovah Witnesses lower Jesus Christ not to be God? How dare the Catholic Church put other people and images and idols and everything before God? How dare they put Mary above Jesus Christ? How dare the, the Muslims, uh, how dare the, the Mormons this lie that Jesus came over here to North America? How dare they? When the finished work was upon that cross that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he arose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that same Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And the cross is because of my iniquity. The bleeding was because of my sin. Because I transgressed against God. God, Jesus said, my Lord, I mean, Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because Stiley Hay was a sinner. And he's dying, going to hell. 
unless I do this finished work. Unless I die on this cross and they bury me and I come out of that grave three days and three nights on April 25th, 1987, he's going to believe on me. That's why I went to the cross. That's why I suffered and died, that he may not go to hell. Look back at the cross. Look back at the tragedy. Look back at the sufferings that ought to happen to us.